So we can go over her, her abilities real quick. Actually, let's go over items first. Okay, so for items, for your first starting item, right? I think Dorn's Blade is just the best. Gives you the best scaling, right? Getting a Dorn's Blade within your kit is just amazing, right? Gives you the HP. But the biggest thing is the, the AD, right? You have, like I said, massive ratios. Uh, without looking at the percent health ratios, you have 150 here. Uh, you have 125 here. So we're looking at 275. You have 40 that scales all the way up to 80 and it does it twice, right? So this means that at, you know, max level, you have 100 plus 160, which now you're up to 435. And every ability, you have four abilities, gives you an extra passive ratio, which is 25, which means you get four, you know, an extra 100 on top of that. So you have 535. And then your ultimate ends up having a 100% bonus which gives you another thing so you have like what 660 just with using landing all your abilities and that's without even going into the percent bonus health ratios which then you know becomes disgusting right so ad is massive on this champion and then you know lifesteal ends up increasing the like i said here right the passive of her ultimate and bessa gains 10 percent armor penetration and her abilities heal for 12 percent of the damage she dealt right uh and the Doran's blade ends up giving you that extra two percent which is not bad uh so yeah if we go to items obviously Doran shield can be really good but if we just look at her abilities her basic abilities the range on her q means versus specific champions you're going to outrange them as long as you know you're not missing your abilities right it's a ver it's a relatively quick ability that is kind of hard to miss right uh right so see the range here it's even the indicator is a little bit off because i can land it from here right and then you get a second part which has very long range right boom you hit this you can walk away and this one even has a little bit longer right so you have to hit the first part on an enemy an enemy this means that you can hit it on minions you can hit it on whatever and even if you miss the enemy champion, as long as you hit minions with it, you have an extra tool to boom, hit them, right? So uh, this means that Doran's shield is not as good in specific matchups because the likelihood of you getting a hit is not as high, right? Obviously versus ranged matchups, uh, Doran's shield will probably just be better simply because you know the the likelihood of you taking damage is going to be a lot higher but yeah even your e your e ends up having a a very big uh range right and then look it gives you an auto attack it gives you right here your passive gives you a thing and it gives your auto attack even gains range right and if you your e has double portions to it so you can hit them twice with it without ever being in their range right even if there's someone that's walking towards you you could do something like this and you gain a little bit of range rate let's say they're walking towards you you slow them it has a 99 percent slow so you could uh because of that both both sides of them have a 99 percent slow right you can look at the movement speed right here this means that if you hit them with the first part you can dash to the side and hit them again and they probably will not be able to retaliate and then you know you you can hit them with 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 the basic attack from range Right, so you go boom, boom, and then boom. You can auto them like that, which is really, really cool, right? And then your W, you can W in place, uh, but obviously you can also W forward. You could W, you know. Another cool thing is if they're auto attacking you, right, you can use your W and even go backwards and still hit them. So it becomes like very, very difficult to even deal damage to this champion if you are a melee champion right uh i don't have the exact numbers of her uh, like her ability ranges but this is a, a good testament just by looking at the ranges on the screen right so now that we've seen that like doran's blade is going to probably be the best item for her uh if we look at boots this is probably going to be the the second thing uh because she has so much mobility you know 
we can just take away like Swifties, you're not going to need Swifties, right? You're not going to need Symbiotic Souls, right? Uh, like Symbiotic Souls is cool, right? Because it just allows you to get to somewhere faster and it's one of the cheapest, right? Uh, that might be some type of like cheat, not necessarily cheat strategy, but it might be a type of strategy where because you don't need boots in order to like in some matchups or something, uh, it might be really good she might end up just being like a she might end up being a mid laner that ends up going for like very big roams especially if you get something like ravenous hydra first for like not only sustain versus some champions but some uh some wave clear because her abilities don't deal that much damage to minions uh we'll go over that in a little bit but i could see symbiotic souls being something but i think swifties is probably never a, an option for her even versus nasus like we like look at the her mobility right and then you can do this so very quickly very quickly you can get oops very quickly you could go like an inhibitor to a turret's length uh, while being slowed i think i can add the status effect Silence. I don't think there's there's any type of slow status effect. Dodge. Yeah, there's no slow status effect, unfortunately. Uh, I could actually do it versus a Ocean Dragon. All right? Let's let's do it versus Ocean Dragon. So we're we're gonna try to run away, right? Actually, let's just let him hit us. Right. Even while slowed, I'm able to go 900 units away uh, without it like really being a big problem versus me. Right. So this is why phase rush isn't amazing. This is why, you know, all of that. Right. This is this is why uh, you don't really care about like slow resistance or even a lot of move speed, because as long as you're in range of, you know, you have the choice to either run away or get on top of them as long as you're like 900 units away which is disgusting right or even if they're on top of you as long as you have your cds up you can you know go 900 units away uh so attack speed boots that's never an option either so the two obviously sork boots aren't an option so the three boots that are never an option berserker greaves sorcerer shoes and boots of swiftness out of the table don't need those never never choose those symbiotic souls might end up being something maybe versus specific matchups uh especially in like higher levels of play where you can end up getting these early and then like you know just pushing waves and using this to just run to the bot lane or you know run and just get like a very big lead in terms of like uh people say like turns or people say like uh i don't know just like you can push waves and be somewhere before the enemy player can right that can definitely be something uh but those are probably the the worst options right and then you have ionian boots not only gives you the haste but it gives you the summoner spell haste which if you do end up going the inspiration tree you go the first strike page you know you're gonna get it gives you the if you take cosmic insight it gives you 18 summoner spell haste which that plus the boots gives you 28 which means that, you know, you get a lot of CD on what whichever, whichever summoner spells you end up taking, right? Which can end up being another type of, like, thing, right? And then the, the haste, since you sh you will end up uh, stack haste on this champion because it is very, very good. Like, getting a little bit more is really, really good if you can afford it, right? Uh, obviously, when you're in the top lane, and especially versus a good amount of matchups... Play to steel caps are probably going to be the best. Especially since, you know, if we're talking about versus a lot of ADC champions, you don't have any like ways to interrupt them. So if you're trying to deal damage to them, they can deal damage to you. Right. And with that being said, you know, you do have maneuver ability, right? You have a lot of dashes to run away from them. That's the only way, the only form of defense that you have aside from your ultimate which suppresses them and stuns them and that's like the only way but it's on your ultimate right and so you know play to steel caps is going to be one of the best uh mark treads is okay 
right? Tenacity on you. Because you are a haste champion, you know, your like your abilities, you're very reliant on your abilities to do something, right? You're you're sort of like Cassante, except you don't get access to a a uh what's it called? To a Zonia's, right? So getting some tenacity seems like a good idea. And so yeah. Uh I don't think Merc Treads are terrible. But if you're just buying them because, you know, you're going against an AP champion, I think that's terrible. <laughs> just saying. Uh, but, yeah. So, outside of boots, let's go to... We could even talk about, like, uh, like is Cole good? I think Cole is pretty good. Uh, like I said, this champion uh, ends up scaling, or Amber ends up scaling with a massive amount of gold. And getting 3 health on hit is actually not bad since you want to be auto attacking on this champion uh so i think it's you know i don't think cole is a bad item uh i think it, whenever you can buy it it's definitely good especially if you can cs talk about basic items uh daggers all of these are really good uh bs sword you're probably never buying anything with bs sword maybe ga maybe but i don't think uh it's very good right i think uh, there's better items epic items they're all pretty good. You're probably never buying Retrix, Wreck, Tricks, uh, Executioner's Calling, Chimpunk, Chainsword. If you do end up needing to be the person with, you know, that gets anti heal, like your option of going for uh, Thorn Mail isn't the best. It is a really strong one item purchase, so it's not terrible. I don't think Chimpunk Chainsword is terrible on, on her either. Because it gives you everything you want, right? AD, the HP is nice. And then it gives you the haste. And then obviously the, the, the grievous wounds, right? The biggest thing is that it gives you AD, right? You scale so much off AD that, you know, this 45 actually means a lot, right? Uh, you're probably never getting wing plated. Actually, you might get wing plated moon plate or wing the moon plate because hole breaker might be a very strong item on this champion. Uh, just because you end up having a lot of auto attack, depending on if you need to, you know, split push in a game, right? If we're going something like uh, Ravenous Hydra with Symbiotic Souls and Trinity Force, we can end up getting a hole breaker, right? Uh, while Black Cleaver might end up being, I'm going a little bit ahead of myself, but because we're talking about a uh, hole breaker, you know, Black Cleaver might be an amazing item on her, but because you get so much percentage armor penetration already, Right, even at level three, I have 42 armor. Right, 10% of that, four armor is gone. Right, uh, an extra 30% would be amazing. Right, if it's 40% with black cleaver, uh, we're looking at 16 armor. You know, it sounds amazing. Right, but because you already have innate armor penetration, holebreaker kind of just becomes a little bit better, especially since you have you don't have like auto attack resets, which are abilities, but they give you attack speed, which means that it's going to you know be a little bit easier to end up you know auto attacking and stacking up your hole breaker to end up dealing damage to either towers or dealing damage to you know uh enemy champions right so i think this is fine she doesn't end up having the highest base ad this does end up having like a very high base ad ratio right 120 percent up to 300 percent but the thing is that like it's just you know adding to your ability to like split push right that's why you get hole breaker blah 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 right and then it gives you everything that you want aside from uh, haste, which, yeah, it is what it is. Uh, so, yeah, uh, Negatron Cloak. You're probably never getting anything that has Negatron Cloak. Uh, none of these give you anything that you want, right? You, you're not, you don't want Abyssal Mask. You don't want Wit's End. And then Kanik is cool, but I do think that Hex Drinker might just be the best magic resist item because you scale so hard off ad and then the omni vamp is actually very important because you are auto attacking and using your spells for the brunt of your damage right uh so yeah epics so yeah let's get to the actual items right we're mostly sticking on to the fighter tree because crit, you don't have anything really to do with crit you do end up having a you know 10 percent armor penetration which means if you do end up getting something like lord dominic's or even more reminder uh, you can end up having 60 to 65% armor penetration, which can be super duper strong. Uh, you can end up going something like Collector, uh, you know, Immortal Shield Bow and Infinity Edge, right, uh, with uh, uh, Lord Doms. And you have decent healing from your ultimate, right, the ultimate passive. 
I don't think this is good, but you know, if you're at an ELO where you just want to try it, I don't think it's terrible depending on who you're going against. You can go a crit build, but I'm, you know, don't say I recommended this, okay? But if you want to do it, do it, okay? Um, uh, Assassin, Voltaic, Cyclosword can end up being really amazing because this champion, right? You have a lot of movement and you have a lot of basic attacking in your kit. So to be honest, this could be an amazing item, right? Let's 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 buy it real quick, right? You end up getting a massive amount of like with one rotation, you can end up getting a good amount of damage from this. With yeah, with one rotation, you could more than likely get two procs of the the voltaic cycle sword passive and because you have percentage armor penetration on the passive getting what is this called getting lethality actually is is better right so you can end up being a super good like lethality stacker which is really cool uh she ends up apparently she is ah there's damage to monsters apparently she ends up having the possibility to be a jungler which is cool uh i don't really see anything aside from the e uh, i don't think it's terrible uh eh, i think she's a better solo laner than jungler but uh, because she's you could probably like flex her jungle top mid but yeah you, like you can't go support she has like zero cc uh but yeah i do think voltaic cyclosword so like the assassin page seems really really strong on her uh hubris is another amazing I'm, I'm gonna make a whole video on hubris uh which i should have i already made it but i want to do it again we'll see what ends up happening uh, but hubris is amazing right similar to voltaic cyclosword they give you all the stats you want ad lethality haste but hubris ends up giving you more ad when you get a kill and this champion scales massively with ad right we already went through the amount of scaling she has she has 665 or 60 bonus ad ratios if you hit everything which means even 15 ad becomes an extra like 90 to 100 damage on your kit right that and and this is if you just get a kill so hubris becomes an item that you might uh really like uh axiom arc becomes an item that you might really like especially if let's say she's broken on release and she just has so much damage where you don't have to get another item that gives you a lot of damage right you don't have to get voltaic cyclosword for the extra damage in order to solo kill someone with an entire rotation this means that getting axiom arc will end up giving you you know an a 18 percent refund on your ultimate ability cooldown right which then ends up becoming disgusting because 18 percent of 100 it'll be 18 seconds off of it right uh which is you know a little bit better and it's it's a little bit harder for them to end up like uh knowing when your ultimate is up right and then uh, yomu's is has already gotten the change right uh and whatever opportunity might end up being super duper strong right especially if you can start uh your combo off with your ultimate because then you get the added 10 lethality yada yada it obviously doesn't give you any haste and whatnot but it's still really really strong uh Cyrilda's is is pretty good but like i said you don't really need uh more percentage armor penetration you can end up getting it but and you also don't need the slow from this the only thing that's really amazing are the stats uh because you like i said you have sticking power but yeah uh profane hydra can end up being super duper strong especially since you already have healing in your kit uh i don't know if we could test something out right uh, let me buy this real quick because i believe the hydra hydras are coded as abilities uh do i heal from this if i get to level six uh, you do heal from this so you heal from the hydra procs right which means that uh getting any type of hydra getting anything that deal or anything that's coded as an ability which is you know i don't think there's anything else that's coded maybe like mage items but uh you can't buy mage items or you, you're not gonna buy mage items because you have no ap scalings but anything that's coded as this i don't think it works on like the passive from voltaic cyclosword because that's something else that deals damage. I don't think Collector's Execute is coded as an ability damage. Uh, maybe something like Sundered Skies is. 
maybe something like eclipse uh passive is we can actually test that out as well right will this give me i think it does give you a little bit of healing right the six percent max uh health damage does end up giving you a little bit of healing right actually no i think because i have lifesteal damn it right i don't think so no it doesn't it doesn't give you any healing so only the the hydras are going to give you healing so yeah eclipse is not not it right so profane hydra uh even stride breaker might end up being pretty good right because it gives you the thing and the only thing it doesn't give you is haste which you know profane and ravenous do end up giving you so i can see profane hydra being really good i could see assassin build on this champion being amazing right so i could definitely see that uh that's probably something i will end up trying once she gets released or if i'm able to get her on the pbe which i'm probably not going to try to do because unless i have a full stack of five which will allow me allow me to play her the chances of me playing her probably not gonna happen maybe we'll see i'll try one day or something we'll, we'll, we'll see what happens right i have like another, a whole two weeks to try uh so yeah assassin build i think can definitely be something right uh like i said profane hydra might be really strong voltaic cyclosword might be really strong as a first item and then hubris can be very strong as well uh because you have so much aoe damage something like serpent you might be a really good serpent's fang applier Mm, that's about it right edge of night is really good so that you can you know get on top because you already have the ability to get on top of someone if all you have to do to end up solo killing someone is making sure you get on top of them then edge of night becomes amazing right because versus somebody like uh velkaz who you know if you're able to block their or like vigar or something right if you're able to block their uh cc or you know just make them or force them to use a spell in order to bait out the cc and then you know you use another mobility to to dodge that uh you know edge of night is amazing right in that in that regard obviously you're not going to rush this but as a second item uh becomes amazing right so i think the assassin page might end up being really good i might you know i'm gonna I'm I'm try it uh she does end up having not the best because she is an energy champion this does mean that you know it's a little bit better or a little bit easier for her to end up what's it called uh go into the mid lane versus you know these immobile champions but yeah so yeah uh tank you're not buying anything in this page i don't think uh there's anything that's really really good here right uh like you just scale so much off ad that it's pretty hard to end up justifying anything like thorn mail is probably the only one like i said if you really need it versus like a full ad team comp i could think i could say going thorn mail can be super duper strong that's about it because you know this only scales off of right everything else that, that scales off of hp you're, you're not buying that right and, and that goes double for some excuse me for support so we go to the fighter page which is probably what most people are going to go. Uh, in terms of first items, right? A lot of first items, people like going Blade of the Lauren King. I don't think this is going to be really good. It, it definitely, it got hit once again. Uh, but, you know, attack speed is not necessarily wasted, but it's not amazing. And then why get that when you can also just, you could just get Ravenous Hydra for 100 more gold while having better components, right? Uh, not necessarily better components, because like pickaxe can can be seen better as a uh, uh, coal fields because coal fields doesn't necessarily matter too much until you get a couple points into your abilities right the lower you get them uh which at level nine you know you're gonna have eight second cooldown on the cube and then once you get coal fields it's gonna be you know a little bit shorter and it's gonna be a little bit harder to play against right um but tiamat just helps you with your uh things right with your combos uh you can tiamat during a, a couple of things right on the second part of your e you can tm at in between after your w you can tm at right and then you don't really lose anything 
Uh, you can. Oh. Right. Uh. Right. Hold up. Hold up. Hold up. Hmm. A little uh, delayed. The team I might end up being added to some combos. Uh, it might allow for some things, but this is not something I want to test with. You know. 90 ping right this is something you got to do with uh with earlier things right so in terms of early things blade of the Run king it's just worse than ravenous hydra i would say and then like black cleaver might be super duper strong right but i think ravenous hydra kind of does the same thing that cleaver does uh in terms of like giving you hp right because not only do you end up getting the hp for or the the added healing right you get an extra six percent healing on your abilities but then you also get the you know the the cleave and the active which you will get extra healing from the the ravenous hydra proc right and because this doesn't state that it's you get extra healing versus champions this means that when you're you know fighting minions right let's just go over here You get extra healing versus minions as well. And then obviously because you're incorporating basic attacks into your uh to your combos, you get, you know, you actually get usefulness from the lifesteal, right? So when you have Doran's Blade and Ravenous Hydra, you get an extra 8% healing on your abilities, which is, you know, it's not it's it's good. It's like getting an extra form of the passive, right? I think that's really amazing, right? Uh you can uh we can look at just vamp scepter right vamp scepter gives you i believe three percent and then oh, we can get rid of this right it gives you four percent right so vamp scepter gives you four percent and then when you finish it off you go all the way up to eight per 18 oops right uh so i do think ravenous hydra is really good i think it's probably better than black cleaver and then what a lot of people might end up going is eclipse which like like because your ultimate ends up giving you healing on abilities uh and that works on the ravenous hydra proc it might even work on the cleave uh i think it's just better obviously eclipse is a lot more like it has kind of a better build path kind of because a lot of times uh you know champions won't be able to use the vamp scepter but she will right because another thing is right you can see the auto range right here it's it's glimmering red right so your ability to just auto attack enemy champions is a lot easier so you know your ability to use vamp scepter is pretty akin to like fiora so vamp scepter is actually a good item on her uh and you can end up getting this for like more sustain and lane and yada 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 right uh tiamat is pretty good because once you get level six uh the tiamat proc will end up healing you right like i said go over here right we can look at her hp you know, you gain an extra 10 uh, HP on the Tiamat proc. And then, yeah, um, you know, you, it works on minions as well. So you can get even at Tiamat. If you're fighting inside a minion wave, you press Tiamat with six minions and the enemy champion. And you're going to heal for a decent amount, right? Uh, as you know, it's going to be the same thing once you get Ravenous Hydra, right? And then, like I said, it gives you the 15 haste, 65 AD, which is amazing. Once again, 660 bonus AD ratio. How much damage is that? Go into the quick calculator. It's like 300 and uh, it's almost 400 damage. Maybe a little bit more, maybe a little bit less. Just from getting this item, right? And then you get a lot of healing and you get the haste. Yada, yada, bing, bong, right? So uh, I think it outshines Eclipse just because it has an extra interaction with Amber due to her ultimate passive. Uh, and then it gives you, right, five more AD and then the lifesteal, right? Which you, you make a little bit more use out of it. Uh, I do think that Eclipse ends up being a very strong item as well, right? Uh, but I don't know. Eclipse becomes a little bit stronger because you get more percentage max health damage 
while also having you know percentage armor penetration right you have armor penetration in her kit which means that you know it ends up being super duper strong in itself uh yeah i think that's that's probably the biggest thing uh that i can i can say to this so uh yeah eclipse uh over ravenous hydra or i think ravenous hydra over eclipse right so let's go over the items that you don't want to buy so you're never buying wit's end you're never buying manu main you're never buying iceborne gauntlet uh you're never buying dead man's plate you're never buying terminus you're never buying experimental hex plate uh you're never buying blade of Doring king mercurial scimitar might end up actually being a good item on her right especially versus specific matchups right because you actually make usefulness out of the the lifesteal it gives a decent amount of ad and then the 40 mr right which is not terrible right i think this would just be specifically versus champions you need the qss versus right like let's say there's a scarner on the enemy team or there's a uh i forgot who else has has some stuff like that uh, obviously malzahar you know uh i don't know if you beat mordekaiser in his ultimate uh like if there's a mordekaiser on the enemy team and you're already strong enough to beat him but you know you need to beat the enemy team i think this item like just completing this item is not terrible but yeah uh i think mercurial scimitar is a decent item you probably never go stride breaker uh people will probably test this out i don't think it's good enough right like obviously you can use all your dashes to get into the middle of the enemy team and then use the stride breaker to you know slow them uh but then a big thing is, is the fact that you know you kind of want to use the you're supposed to use the movement speed from the stride breaker to get on top of people but you don't need that so why use this right why get this uh, i would say that you would even get more hp from ravenous hydra than you do stride breaker right because as if you use the ravenous hydra let's say enemy team doesn't have any healing reduction if you're on top of the back line, let's say three champions, use Ravenous Hydra. I think you'll get probably like two, two to three hundred HP, which already means that uh, you know, uh Stride Breaker, you know, it's you're you're just losing 25 AD, uh getting 25% attack speed, but no haste. So it is what it is, right? Uh not buying Titanic Hydra because you're not really buying any HP items. Overlord's Blood Mail, you're not getting that, and then you're probably not getting Bloodthirster simply because it doesn't give you haste and you know it just doesn't give you as much right the shield is cool but i don't think you need it right uh i don't think it's that good uh, there's probably going to be people trying out like a lifesteal build on her right with like blade of ruin king ravenous hydra bloodthirster uh we could you know put all of these we can even put mercurial scimitar on our thing and we can end up healing for 40 percent of the damage dealt from our abilities and stuff like that but is that worth it right you have a good amount of attack speed but you have no haste uh and then you just have a lot of lifesteal so yeah i don't think that's that's the thing to do so yeah now let's get serious so let's say we go ravenous hydra first uh depending on what we need if we have if we're looking to team fight which we like she seems already like a really good team fighter uh, you know, let's say you, you have armor boots, right? Uh, let's just max out our runes, fully stack our runes, right? We have 15 haste here. Uh, right, if you're looking to team fight, your ability to apply Black Cleaver to the enemy team is amazing, right? You have infinite AoE spells. Like, the only single target spell you have is your ultimate and then obviously your, your basic attacks, right? Uh, so your ability to apply cleaver is amazing right and then the fact that the lower hp they have this means the more healing you will do with by dealing more damage with your abilities with your auto attacks with ravenous hydra and yada 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 right so lifesteal also scales by uh armor penetration so because you know you do, the more damage you deal the more you're gonna light you're gonna heal right so makes a lot of sense right uh if you want to get this then right if you're going a full healing build it depends right uh because you have a lot of survivability options right if we're looking for like a team fight thing at this point it really depends like you can't get Starry's gauge it's not good enough and as you can see here even at level 10 it only gives you 39 bonus ad it's not that good uh so 
you know, stuff like Dev's Dance and Maul are actually really good on this champion because of how strong the AD scaling is, right? And the Omni Vamp is also amazing on this champion uh, because it basically gives you, you know, the, the extra healing, right? While it doesn't end up giving you an increase on your, your ultimate, you know, the passive of your ultimate, it's still, you know, once you proc it, you want to continue fighting, right? This gives you all the stats you want if you need those stats, right? It gives you the AD and haste, which is amazing. And then obviously, if you need the magic resistance, you know, it, it provides you that. So I do think Maul on this champion specifically is absolutely amazing if you need it. It's probably, it's not probably, it is the best magic resist option on this champion that you can get. And then you can get Death's Dance. And now you get the, you know, you're back to that unkillable uh, thing and you have a lot of healing and you have a, a good amount of resistances and a lot of ways to, you know, stop all of the, the, the yada, 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 right? At level 18, you have 3k HP with all of this, right? And if you want uh, more healing, I do think that Sunder Sky is actually really good uh, for two reasons, right? I don't think any of your abilities ends up proccing Sunder Sky, but as a, uh, a champion... Uh, let me, because, uh, there's some bugs, right? So because you have the ability, right? Because your passive ends up giving you range, right? Usually a champion or that has some sky would only be, if you're right here, would only be able to auto attack this dummy in front of you or this dummy right here, right? But because you have mobility, on your things on your uh on your passive you have the ability to get on top of somebody else right and then you can end up hitting the entire enemy team to end up getting more healing off of sunder sky right so you know this is kind of akin to irelia because if she gets her her mark on you uh she's able to dance on everybody and get a good amount of healing from sunder sky right where somebody like zin Zhao, if you end up getting sunder sky you're mostly going to be dumping your your damage on you know one person that's because you're a single target champion and so you know you're not going to get too many you're not going to get another proc off sunder sky unless that person gets out of your range and you have to hit somebody else right or you cognitively cognitively end up hitting another person to deal less damage to the first person so you can get a little bit of healing right where her you can end up right auto tagging this person Do some stuff like that. And and like you could just go around in a team fight and, and you have the ability to go wherever you want and get more healing off of you know different type of champions, right? Uh let me see. This is supposed to heal a 114. Let's see if it heals 114. I think it does. 114. Yeah, it deals 114, right? So I don't think this gets any added healing from the ultimate. So yeah, uh, I think Sundered Sky, this is probably going to be like, if not the pro build, but, you know, something like that. Something around there just for being like a, a frontliner. You go in, you you use all your things and you don't die, right? Because if we look at, if we uh, put all our points in, you have a four second Q, you have a seven second shield, Right, you have a four second E and you have a 60 second ultimate, right? Obviously, your ultimate is you know not going to be up twice in a fight, but your Q and your E might, right? You go like this, boom, 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 boom. Oh, do I have I still have this on? Damn it. Right. So you like once you end up doing your your Q W E your Q will be back up and then uh, with this build you know you have to wait a little bit in order to get uh, you know your next E off right but obviously you know there's another build right so I think this is a good team fighting build you make use out of all the stats uh, you make you you make probably the best use out of all of these items <laughs> I would say right so there's this right and if we keep going with Ravenous Hydra first. Uh, I think there's a split pushing build that can be really strong, right? So obviously there's Triforce, 
right i don't think this item is bad right like i said she doesn't have the best amount of base ad right 114 base ad that is relatively low where i think like meganar or nar have like 160 they have like a lot of these juggernauts and and other type champions have at the very least like i believe Jax even has like 130 or something maybe 140 but uh stuff like that uh it's just the frequency of her being able to use her uh the spell blade right and then uh we can let's get rid of these uh dummies let's let the minions go let's speed it up by 30 seconds right let's go bot lane um, as you can see her abilities don't deal good damage her e mostly deals damage right okay so her passive does end up working on the the thing right uh so So her Q ends up giving you like two passive stacks. So you can like melt through towers if you're using your abilities correctly. And there's not one bad like uh, thing. There's not one bad stat on Trinity Force which ends up like being bad, right? You might think attack speed, but I think there's a there's a, a cool little mechanic uh, that attack speed allows you to end up having, which is really good, right? And since you end up you know, having a lot of a good amount of attack speed, you can end up getting hole breaker, right? And now this build makes a lot of sense for guess what? You're just pushing side lanes, right? You get uh, movement speed here, you get movement speed here, and you get the wave clear, and you get the ability to to knock down turrets and yada yada yada, right? You have that, and then you can uh, you could do some other stuff, right? And, and from here, you get whatever else you need, right? If you're looking at tower dive, somebody you, know, you can go GA, you can go Mercurial. Uh, you can go uh, uh, Sojin for more haste, so that your your <coughs> so that your abilities are off cooldown more and stuff. Yada yada yada, right? Uh, Death Dance. You go more healing with like Bloodthirster if you really want to. Uh, you can get you can get some assassin items, right? You can get stuff like Edge of Night uh, because Lethality does end up working on turrets. You can get, you know, whatever you need, right? You can get yo moves, you can get opportunity, you can get whatever you want, uh, umbro, whatever, right? To, to get rid of their vision. But at this point, you know, if your whole way of winning the game is by, you know, being able to split push, I think uh, she definitely has that option. You can do that as well, right? Uh, so yeah, there's that. Uh, I don't, you know, she's obviously not as strong as like, you know camille or fiora right if they had these items but i think that she you know she's decent she's better than a, a good amount of champions because she gains a bonus attack speed as you can see here on the passive and she ends up gaining uh, a little bit of added damage on the passive right at this point i'm level 18 you know an extra 52 damage not terrible right so i don't think it's bad you know, obviously you're losing damage on your abilities and all that, but what you're gaining is, you know, uh, more turret taking potential. I don't think it's terrible. It's just, you know, something you could do. You could also buy materials, right? So that if they end up collapsing on you, you can just use materials and, you know, you're, you're gone, right? I want to test something out real quick. okay i thought uh you could like qss and uh, this thing would come back online nope doesn't work okay but yeah you could do this and be like a, a really really annoying side laner and stuff like that right uh and then you end up having 26 percent on your your ability so you have a lot of healing uh, and then, you know, you have a lot of shielding, right? And then obviously here you can end up getting uh, like Dead Man's Play for more movement speed. You can get whatever you need just so that you're like running around the map. And, and like this can also be good just for like running around the map. Like I said, right? This is a cheesy uh, s like side laning build and whatnot. But yeah, I do think that 
if you don't end up going assassin build uh like if you're going in the top lane a ravenous hydra build is probably really really strong uh like eclipse is really good right that added shield ends up being amazing you know like i said once again all the the uh the haste from this is really really strong or just everything it gives you is super duper strong it's 400 gold cheaper uh, has a really good build path um, after this i don't think uh, i do think spear sojin is amazing you could end up going something like a, a full like brute like eclipse into sundered sky and like have whatever right let's say you have this right and you just end up having like really good 1v1 potential because you get a 200 hp shield you get a 100 plus six percent of your missing health uh heal every time you basic attack someone on an eight second cooldown and this is on a six second cooldown you have a i mean i'm obviously not the level but you have like a 300 shield or something right 280 270 uh so like your trades are going to be a little bit more disgusting uh but what eclipse lacks is a lot of wave clear right because if we go here your q does not too much it's not like something that's terrible right uh where's the the next wave is gonna be over here right uh your w your w doesn't give you wave clear your e gives you wave clear right but But like your wave clear is pretty bad right and so eclipse gives you better training but it doesn't give you wave clear as where like ravenous hydra kind of gives you the same amount of trading because yes you don't end up getting the shield right but you get healing in a different format right or you get like survivability or you know uh just the the likelihood of your hp trades in a different format uh you know uh, because of the lifesteal and then the healing that you get from your abilities uh the increased healing that you get plus i think this ends up giving you like added uh what's it called combos into your kit and it's, it's very seamless to end up adding ravenous hydra into your kit right so i think while eclipse is good i think ravenous hydra is better and then at this point you can still get eclipse like i don't think eclipse is bad right but it just depends on the game if you're going for like a full 1v1 build i think like this seems disgusting so you have eclipse Sunder sky and ravenous hydra to give you like a turbo amount of healing right and the spear sojin increasing your your abilities by 12 percent, which means that you know the more damage that they deal the more healing you will end up uh, getting from the damage you deal right so uh, this is amazing and then 25 basic haste on your abilities right they're super low cooldown and then you can end up getting something like a black cleaver and you know once again lowering uh all the things you could also say you know i don't need the added movement speed and i don't need the added uh or the stackable armor pen uh and you can end up getting right you can end up getting serildus because it gives you the same amount of ad the same amount of haste same amount of armor penetration except it's upfront armor penetration uh, and, and yeah, or, or you could get, you know, a different, uh, you can get like axiom mark, right? Because you already have percentage armor penetration. It just depends, right? Will the percentage armor penetration give you more than, you know, something like axiom mark will, they would need what? 30%. They would need more than like 80, 80, not even. I mean, yeah, it, it always does, right? Black Cleaver always, Black Cleaver and Cyrildas always gives more. So yeah, uh, you know, you just go Black Cleaver, right? And now you're just, this is like a super build, right? Obviously the survivability is if you're able to get like some of the sky off and stuff like that. Uh, but yeah, I think these are really good. And you know, you don't need boots, right? Because of, of how mobile you are. So you can end up selling it for like Devs Dance and whatnot. You could probably even sell it for Triforce. But I think Death Dance or Maul, whichever one you need. Death Dance is kind of more versus all and stuff like that, right? And now you're, you have a 700 shield on a 6 second cooldown, which lasts for 1.5 seconds, right? Big ass shield. Uh, very, very cool. Very, very good. Right? 600 shield. Very nice. Right? So I think, uh, yeah, this champion's pretty cool. Uh, so that's it for her, you know, her items.